SEO is AEO. Welcome to the show, Jerry White. Hi. You like that? Love it. Thank you very much. Lovely to meet you. We've bumped into each other a couple of times. Very I've nice, ruined yeah. a couple of your Take It Offline events. Yes, you've, you've, um, we've heard your voice in the corner a few times, yes. And you've got a, another one coming up in Amsterdam, which yeah. I promise not to ruin. Okay, no, no, it's going to be great, and I would love it if you're there. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm definitely coming. That, Amazing. That's all booked up. Perfect. You've got loads of really great people coming. I know, it's a bit of a surprise, actually, when you kind of go, well, this event's happening, and people sign up, and you kind of go, oh, brilliant people, yes. Yeah. It's always good, so, and it's a really positive, warm feeling, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been surprised at how many people you've convinced to go to Amsterdam, not because I don't think you're any good. Uh, no, no, I think they kind of went Amsterdam, free for it. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's work related. Yes, all good. Brilliant. Okay, perfect. So yeah. that's going to be good. That's in October sometime. Yep, October the, I just know the date for this one. Fourth? It's, yes, fourth. Fifth. Yes, yes. Fourth and fifth. Yeah, yeah. You can find it going to takeitoffline.co.uk and that will tell you before I tell you the wrong dates. There you go. Brilliant stuff. And we're not talking about that today. We're talking huh? about okay. analytics. Yep and Google Data Studio, and yep. using Google Data Studio to pull the analytics data in and make it dance. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that um, I often find is that people, so the best example at the moment is my colleagues at work are kind of going, what are the browsers that are people using? And how do we find out what we should be supporting? What, what basically versions of Chrome, what versions of Safari, and things like that. And then we started to try to get the information out of Google Analytics, and they were drilling down, and they were pulling it out. Then they're doing the same thing for different countries, different properties, and I'm kind of going, actually, I can build this for you in Data Studio. Plug it in, pull it out, you can export it to um, Excel, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. I can build it once, and we can rinse and repeat it. So that's what I did. I basically took the data from um, Google Analytics, pulled it into Google Data Studio, and we were starting to look at conversion rates and drilling down into it. And they were like, this is brilliant. This is saving us so much time. And we, we need to do this exercise once every couple of months because we need to kind of re repeat to make sure we're still supporting the best versions of Chrome for everybody, the, the best versions of Safari, the best versions of, um, I don't know, some people are still using Edge, some people are using Internet Explorer, or whatever version they're using. And it's in very interesting, actually, oh, oh, when I'm doing it. The grannies are still using yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's actually really interesting when I kind of start looking into the data, kind of go, that's really interesting. We're actually so focused on Chrome because that's what we do our development work on and mm -hmm. like that. We're not looking at the fact that actually Apple and Safari is X percentage of users and we should be maybe focusing on those people. And Data Studio allows me to kind of make this really visual and really available to everybody, available to kind of senior people who don't want to spend time learning how to use Google Analytics, yeah. learning how to kind of drill into that data. And the best thing is as well is I can make this automated almost. So people plug it in and pull it out. And then we can look at all sorts of other metrics associated with it. So we can see if there's page speed issues for a particular browser or something like that. Yeah, and, and you can you can share the template with, with all sorts of people. I mean, the only one I can remember is Aleda Solis who did one yeah. for pulling in from Search Console and shared it with everybody, and yeah. it was magnificent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, funnily enough, I remember an agency pitching us once, and, and they used that exact same thing but with their own logo on it. And you know that moment when you kind of... I've seen this before, <laughs> and I'm sitting there kind of going, I won't, I won't highlight this, because in fairness, the fact they did it shows that they're obviously reading her work, they're using it, and to be honest, it was a pitch, so, mm. you know, I'm not going to blame them for doing it, I would probably do something similar myself, so, you know, <laughs> it's not laziness, it's just efficiency, and I like mm. efficiency. Yeah, and when somebody so, like Ross Tavendale, who does it as well, and, yeah. and Elayda Solis comes up with a great template, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. why wouldn't I? Well, Ross is incredibly smart when it comes to kind of the data usage, I mean, yeah. he and I, um, have had many conversations over a beer where um, we've kind of talked about how he's pulling data in and using it. His team are kind of data scientists and all that. Yeah. They're very impressive. The type A media, I'm very impressed with at the moment. So, yeah. Um, so you, you pull all this data in for one particular client and then you start sharing it with other clients, showing them the data. No, sorry. Share one client's not, data with other No, no, I meant sorry, the template with it. Yeah, with absolutely. Well, I mean, mainly I work uh, client side for one client at the moment. So, I don't tend to do that too much, but they've got lots of properties, so I can turn around and kind of go, actually, oh I want this God, and this right. and this. And equally, I can pull multiple sets of Google Analytics into one particular data studio. So Ooh. I can actually, so yeah, exactly. So Sorry. If you've got, no, no, I know where you're <laughs> going with this. If you've got 10 clients. I'm not going anyway, you're going, but I, 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 I can see what you go, go ahead. So if you've got 10 clients, you can look at their, you can have 10 um, trend sheets over like on, on one page, and you can kind of look at it every morning or every day. And you're the first person to spot when their bounce rate has fallen, when, their, when the conversion rate has dropped off. And you, you're the first person to see, actually, you've got an issue here. And you mm. can see it before the client does. And if you see it before the client, and you turn around to the client and say, actually, I think you've got a problem, 
that's a winner for you because it makes you look like you're proactive and the best agency yeah. possible. And you get loads of brownie points. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not kidding. If an agency turned around to us and didn't notice that our traffic had dropped off after two weeks or something, we'd be a little bit annoyed with them. So mm -hmm. it, is, it is really good there. And the other thing you can do is you can... You don't have to use the metrics and the information as it is in there. You can use things like case statements to say, I want to, so for instance, you can group all of your traffic together or do something where you kind of group or, or modify the data a little bit. And for that one reason, it's really, really powerful. Um, best example is the fact that in, you were talking about Google Search Console data. You can actually turn around and say, actually group this as being brand and this as non-brand. Yeah. Suddenly you've got a graph which kind of goes non-brand traffic versus brand traffic. Ooh, and that's yeah. way more important than kind of going traffic in total because you can say, actually, brand traffic, we want to see when brand traffic goes up and down because it shows how good our offline, online marketing is going. And it, it's like um, attribution, basically. You can say, wow, we've just done this advert, brand traffic went up, yeah. good advert. We've just you done this one advert and it's gone down, done the other. But equally, the non-brand traffic is important for us to yeah. look at how good our SEO is, basically. Mm. We don't almost care about the brand traffic because that's there anyway, but we want yeah. to see the non-brand traffic to kind of go, are we actually reaching enough people with uh, the general SEO that we're doing? Yeah, you just managed to talk about two of my favorite things oh, in sorry. the world. No, no, Search Console yeah. and brand yeah. uh, and, the, and the volume of brand traffic. And I've actually now thinking, I, I keep going into uh, Search Console, sorting out the brand from the non-brand, yeah. and what I should do is set up a data studio, have the graph going, yeah. so I don't actually have to bother doing anything, yeah. I'll just look at everything we like. The one problem is you can't do that as a template. So you'll have to do it like each by client by each client, and you, because well, the like, case yeah. statement doesn't unfortunately copy over with each one, but it's okay. brilliant. Suddenly, and it isn't just with brand and non-brand, if you've got a campaign, for instance, targeting, I don't know what, um, I'm trying to think. So shoes, pink example. shoes. Yeah, pink shoes. If you're talking about shoes, for instance, you can kind of go all the keywords with the phrase shoes in it, or pink in it, and mm. you can kind of go, or even if you're targeting different colors. I mean, that's a great example, actually. In e-commerce, sometimes you kind of go, we're not actually, faceted navigation, big problem in, yeah. uh, in SEO and things like that. And sometimes you kind of go, well, actually, I want to look at, um, we've done this work to kind of go, now we're targeting white shirts and blue shirts and stripy shirts and lovely red shirts. <laughs> um, and you want to see how much of this has actually come in versus now before. And the best thing about this is it's retrospective. So because you've got is it 18, 16 or 18 16. Months, 16 months of data, suddenly you've got quite a reasonable chunk of historical data. And if you start doing work on this, you can actually go back through it mm. by using Google Data Studio, the case state, and things like that. Um, one of the things I do, for instance, is content grouping in Data Studio. So I create the regex and say, this page is this, this page is that. And then I can segment it, divide it up, yeah. and, and suddenly in Data Studio, you can kind of go, I want to see all the traffic coming through to the, the pink shoes pages, or all the shoes pages, or the particular page yeah, template. And, and, and you, can, you can group the, the pages, and then mm. pull in the keywords that are, that are appearing yeah. for each one, and just show them all in yeah, there. Yeah, so you can, blend, you can blend your Google Analytics data, and your Google Search Console data, and another source of data. You can even blend in Screaming Frog data, whichever you want to do. So suddenly you've got huge amounts of data sources that you can blend together, as long as you've got some kind of key which connects it all up. And as I mentioned before, the regex, because you can use regex, you can kind of go, all of these pages are, you know, you can, who is it? Uh, Nick Wellsden was showing some incredible data studio reports that he did. Okay. And the work that he's been doing is kind of going, oh, I have this data source here, Systrix data, you've got this data, you've got that data. You've got so many data sources being blended in, and he's kind of going, this is how a senior manager wants to look at it. And he's got it kind of going all the way down, so every level down. Oh, brilliant. So. Lead but versus that lag metrics, some really smart stuff. And uh, yeah, no, if I'm sorry, nothing to do with data, but that's really mm. difficult for me to figure out. Yeah. What does the boss want to see? What does the oh person yeah. underneath him? Yeah. I'm terrible at that, I'll have All to right. be honest. Oh right, sorry, but I was going to ask you about no, that. No, 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 so, so um, interestingly, I went to a talk on this by the data scientist from Monzo, and she has a brilliant presentation on that exact subject, and it's, it's kind of going, actually, less is more almost. Basically, take everything that you think they want to see and then almost take away everything that you think doesn't really help the argument or the case and so on and so forth. And you take it and, and then you can kind of go, actually, you can, you've got multiple pages in Data Studio, so you can kind of go, top level stuff. Do you want more information? Click down, so you can yeah. drill down and drill down. Data Studio is rapidly improving in that way. You can actually have it so you can filter reports by clicking on a segment in a pie chart or you can kind of go, what I want to do is have more information here the only downside is, of course, if you start drilling down here and then you go to a different page, you've got to remember that all of it's drill, uh, filtered if you do it in that way. 
So, okay. but it's getting more and more advanced. It's getting more and more comprehensive, and it's still not Tableau. I mean, Tableau is like the tank of it all. Um, okay. Data Studio is more like the Ford Escort with all of the bells and whistles you can possibly. But imagine. Ford Escorts in the in the seventies were really pretty cool. I know. I'm trying to think if um, of a better example. But mini. Basically, mini. Uh, yeah, old Mini or a new Mini. Oh no! Oh, uh, Reliant Robin. I wouldn't call it a Reliant Robin. Um, <laughs> for one thing, it's still in beta. It's not that uh, Reliant. Um, but then there was a Rob Reliant Robin. Basically, it's really good. It's so. Once you learn how to do the basics, you'll quickly learn how to do the more advanced. Okay, because I've, I've been a little bit kind of scared off by yeah. what you would consider to be the basics. No, no, I know exactly. There's but I mean, I'm, I'm still storing stuff in a MySQL database and then pulling it all out, and I'm wasting well, actually, a lot no, of time. You can, you can do that using Data Studio. So Data Studio has a connector to MySQL, and oh uh, right. Um, I mean, we do. So w my big biggest client at the moment is Just Eat, of course, and they put everything into Big uh, Query. And then we used uh, Google Data Studio as a connector for all that information. And I have to be honest, I need to improve my SQL skills, but a lot of the work that I do is kind of going, actually, we can pull this information in. We can start to graph it like this. We pull in our ranking data. We pull our um, search console data. We pull everything into a big query. And suddenly, we've got the ability to kind of go, let's look at this audience in this mm. way. And, and then we can even pull it right out to kind of almost a user basis and kind of go, why is it not working here? What's the problem here? When you can segment down to that level and pull it back out again, you can start to really optimize. And I think that's the smartest thing that people are doing at the moment um, in really big companies. And I just wish that um, you know smaller companies had the access to these tools. Yeah. And that's what Data Studio is giving you. There yeah, well, it gives you the access, but then yeah. the, the, the entry side of it is actually quite scary for a lot no, of people. Absolutely. And but you know, it's one of those things where when you start to go down the route, and as you mentioned, the templates there. Mm. Once you do the template, is that gives you the ability to kind of go, okay, I've got the template, I'll delete this bit, I'll put this bit on, I don't want it to look like this, I'll rename this and, and just hack around with it a bit. Oh, and can you make things look really pretty so that people are right impressed by your design skills? Some people can. <laughs> Mine don't. Mine look like data puking almost, and that's one of my things. Um, again, I worked with um, a agency once, and they had a designer in, and it was almost like, let's sit down with a designer, and he designed how it should look, and we went, okay, so... We took this in as a background picture and just drew over the top of it because there's rules of thirds, there's design yeah. rules and everything like that. And he was like, well, if you go for like 60, 64, 66. Uh, my maths is terrible. Basically, he kind of divided the page. For somebody who's dealing with data, I know, I know, I know, and I'm thinking to myself here, this is, this is something I should know, but basically it's like, yeah, so you kind of go, um, you basically divide up the page almost and you yeah. kind of go, have this like this and you have these invisible lines. And yeah. You well, can make it look a lot smarter. And my my ex-wife is a graphic designer, and I asked her a few weeks ago to help me with my slide design. Yeah. And I was going, it looks not very good, but I don't really know why. And she just came in literally in 20 minutes. She went, here's your line, here's your line, here's your yeah. line. Make sure everything sticks those on. You're going, fine, yeah. brilliant, there you go. Well, the other thing is that you can use univer not universal, um, like consistent templates within mm. Rigor. So I've always kind of put a header at the top and a footer at the bottom, little bits and pieces, and I always put the same information in. Um, one piece of advice, I think it was from Grant Kemp, actually, but don't quote me on that one because it could have been someone else. But basically, he said that when he was working at Photobox, he put his contact details within the footer and said, look, you know, if there's a problem with this particular this report, yeah. click here and contact me. I mean, he, one of the things we discussed about was putting that as a Google form. So instead of it going through, it goes through a Google form and you can mm. kind of leave notes on it saying, you know, yeah. I don't like this, I want this, I want that. This doesn't help me here, I don't understand this, and so on mm. and so forth. And so because there's like an owner, because there's kind of a management process there, it means it's continuously improving. And I think that's really awesome. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, sorry, the, 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 I'm, I'm coming back to the designing, because you've got yeah. all this data, you've pulled all this data mm. in. Um, You've decided who's going to see what. You've made it all pretty. Yeah. You deliver your reports. Mm -hmm. One of the hardest things, as you were saying, is making it simple. Yeah. And actually getting rid of all the clutter. Because I mean, I, I find myself building reports or, or trying to provide information, just yeah. giving them too much, and they go, "Don't understand. What's that? What's that?" And you, you need to get it down to the, the essential. Yeah, absolutely. So Nick Wells didn't mention this thing with lead and lag metrics. Basically, the, I can't remember the difference, but basically he's saying that you know. <laughs> There's KPIs. Yeah. What I care about is revenue mm. from this channel. I don't care about blah, 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 all the kind of the metrics that build yeah. up to it and stuff like that. But you know, what? I kind of still want them just maybe hide them on the page two almost rather than oh, right, the first yeah, page. Okay. So, um, from a writing background, there's something called the inverted pyramid uh, writing style. Okay. 
Please and help. the inverted pyramid means that when you're writing for like a newspaper, you start with X did this, and, and so you know if you scan read it, the, the top level, you get all the information you really need. Mm. Okay. Then as you go down, you get the detail that you want, and then right down the bottom, you get the further kind of information that really makes up the story, and things like that. And that's how newspapers write, and that's how you should write online for content, for products, and things like that. Oh, right, so, okay. um, so this inverted pyramid is really critical, and it's the same thing with um, information for dashboards mm. and everything. So, you know, you've got the scorecards at, at the top where you kind of go, this is how much revenue, this is how much our visibility is, this is mm. the this is the information that absolutely needs this week, and then yeah. you've got further down pie charts that I mean, generally um, people say you shouldn't use pie charts ever. I quite like why them. not. Right. Sorry, I'm no, 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 it's a good question. So there's a lot of reasons why people are against pie charts is that um, it's often a bad way to express data. Um, okay. I would love to expand on this point, but my brain has kind of gone, I can't remember exactly why, but basically it's more about the fact that um, uh, how you represent data and stuff like that, like a pie, um, uh, bar chart is better yeah. and, and you can yeah, do yeah, a bar it, chart so. kind of makes visual yeah. sense along that way. Yeah. And I think the brain, when you're looking at it like that, you can't actually conceptualize the relative size of each one, except this one's incredibly big and that one's yeah. incredibly small. And if you've got mm. two medium-sized ones, the actual difference between them is not clear, whereas when you've got a bar, you can see the top of the first bar and see, oh, that's bigger. Yeah. And I mean, it's very yeah, simplistic. Yeah, and you can also combine multiple I just made that up. No, no, you're right. I mean, basically, from my understanding, pie charts are harder to understand the conceptual yeah. and things like that. And yeah. I mean, I often have them just to basically kind of lead almost as to the filters. Mm. So when people want to filter um, a data studio report, I often use the pie chart to kind of go filter here by particular channel or something like that. Okay, right. So I could do the same thing with a bar chart or something, but um, I think it's pure laziness that I use <laughs> pie charts, if I'm honest. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the idea that you can look at a bar, a bar chart, a, a, a pie chart, and you see what you're interested in, it doesn't really matter that you can, you can visualize which yeah. is bigger and which is smaller. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm now, the, now we're talking about it, I've never thought about it before, yeah. but bar charts do seem to me to be much, much more appropriate. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of kind of theory into dashboard design and, and how it's all set up. And everything. So yeah, I'd love to go into it, but I think that I would have to reread the information before I come Brilliant. on the podcast. And everything. But so, yeah. to come back to Data Studio, you're yeah. saying you can pull the data into yeah. Data Studio and push it out to uh, MySQL database? No, no, the other way around. So basically oh, the data sorry. comes into MySQL, Mm. And then you can take the data. From, so Data Studio is always the front end. The only time that you can kind of, what you can do is if you've got a table of information, mm. uh, for instance, from Google Search Console, you can just right click on it and export the information. So sometimes I do use it as a front end to get data into Excel, which is a very strange way of doing it, <laughs> where it's almost like Data Studio should be the kind of like the front end to mm. it all. But sometimes I want information in Excel, and I want it from Google Search Console in, in a particular way, and you can't just export it from Google Search Console as easily because it's limitations. You can get it from the API, and the best interface of the API is the Data Studio. So it's kind of a hack to get the data from the API into Excel or oh, something like that. Which, brilliant. Yeah. Well, I, no, so I had another question then. Mm. It, does the API, when it's going into uh, Data Studio, have limits? Because when you use the API, I've been using it using PHP, yeah. and I quite quickly get hit by the limits that I'm, I, I can't go over and the number of times I've been requesting one particular property. Yeah, so you still have the limits, still oh right. have the API limits, and like that, but it's way higher than, so for instance, the amount of rows you can export from the API is way higher than you can export from um, like the interface, the classic Yeah, with, with the API you've got 5,000? Or is it more now? I think, it's, I think it was 10,000, but don't quote me on that one again. Ooh. But yeah. Well, I'll go and, yeah. go and research no, no, it's that. Okay. So yeah, I think, it's, I think it's quite high. But um, so one of the things that we do do, for instance, is we take the data from Google Search Console on a daily basis and pull it out and push it into BigQuery. Mm. And therefore, we kind of break the limits ourselves by kind of going, we'll take all that data and pull it into Data Studio, uh, into data studio without any of the limits because we're using kind of a, a different data source. So we're doing that now. We've started doing that for a while. There's other tools out there, um, trying to remember, there's lots of tools out there that are doing that. So it's not like it's something where you need to build something complicated. There are tools already built up for it. But uh, Supermetrics you mentioned earlier on, they have the ability to kind of pull the data out. And as you mentioned, what you can do is you pull out 5,000, then you pull out the next 5,000, then you pull out the next What I've been doing so to get around that limit, I mean, whether yeah. it's 5,000, 10,000, yeah. uh, I, I, th I thought it was, but no, no, is, is, is I segment by folder. 
yeah. uh, for pages, for example, or by keyword or by yeah. uh, brand Absolutely. or non-brand. Yeah. Uh, and that, that works really well. It's a bit, bit laborious, but it, yeah. it, it, you, you can get quite a lot of data out of it no, at, at the end of the day. Yeah. If yeah. you can manage to find the way to segment it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that, um, so. But I've, I've actually got some, well, I had a client who didn't bother putting folders. Everything was at root level because of the kind of thing, shorter URLs well, are much better. that's the great thing about Data Studio, again, is oh. that if you, can, if you can differentiate between the pages somehow, mm. in, in Google Search Console or Google Analytics by regex, then you can pull it out that way, mm. which you can't do as easily in Google um, Analytics because it, the rules aren't quite as flexible or weren't historically. Yeah. And also, if you put uh, rules in now for content grouping, they're not retrospective. It happens from now going forward. So the amount of times where I kind of go, I need this in this way, Data Studio becomes the way. And um, one of the things I've got into the habit of doing is creating a, a document on my own computer of all the regex for all of the different ways in which <laughs> the websites are segmented. <laughs> Uh, I've now put it into uh, Google sh um, Google Docs because everyone else keeps going, oh, have you got the regex for this? Is the regex for that? I'm kind of going, yes, but yeah. I find regex really difficult to, to get my head around. It's not, it's not, it's the really advanced stuff confuses the heck out of me at times and I mm. can sit there, I mean, I remember writing stuff out on a whiteboard years ago, mm. almost kind of going, if this does this and this does that and this does the other, what does it look like? Um, there's regex testers online, so I often kind of go, this is what the input looks like, this is what the output needs to be. Mm. And I work really hard to try and make sure it comes out. But generally, my regex is for the uh, Data Studio related stuff. It's really dummy stuff. It's really not that hard. So okay. I kind of go and find um, some sort of simple stuff and take it from there. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much, Jerry. No that, was, that was a brilliant discussion about loads of stuff I didn't know very much awesome. about. Thank you for listening. SEO is AEO. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. And we're back to the main stage.